Welcome to another video by your friend, Matthew Sherling. Today I'm going to read another passage from Fernando Pessoa's Book of Disquiet, because why not, you know? Why not? It's one of my favorite books. I reread it this year, and I wrote down page numbers of passages that would be good to read on this Reading Aloud series, and... Fernando Pessoa calls this book a factless autobiography. Very Pessoan of him. And this is fragment number 76. I sometimes enjoy, in split fashion, thinking about the possibility of a future geography of our self-awareness I believe that the future historian of his own sensations may be able to make a precise science out of the attitude he takes towards his self-awareness. We're only in the beginnings of this difficult art. At this point, just an art, the chemistry of sensations in its as yet alchemical stage. The scientist of tomorrow will pay special attention to his own inner life subjecting it to analysis with a precision instrument created out of himself. I see no inherent obstacle to making, out of steels and bronzes of thought, a precision instrument for self-analysis. I mean steels and bronzes that are really steels and bronzes, but of the mind. Perhaps that's the only way it can be made. Perhaps it will be necessary to formulate the idea of a precision instrument, concretely visualizing it, in order to undertake a rigorous inner analysis. And it will surely be necessary to reduce the mind to some kind of real matter with a space for it to exist in. All of this depends on an extreme refinement of our inner sensations, which, when taken as far as they can go, will doubtless reveal or create in us a space just as real as the space that's occupied by material things, and that, come to think of it, has no reality. For all I know, this inner space may just be a new dimension of the other one. Perhaps scientific research will eventually discover that everything is dimensions of the same space, which is neither physical nor spiritual, so that in one dimension we live as bodies, and in another as souls. And perhaps there are other dimensions where we live other equally real facets of ourselves, Sometimes I enjoy getting lost in the useless meditation of just how far this research might take us. Perhaps it will be discovered that what we call God, so obviously on a plane beyond logic and space-time reality, is one of our modes of existence, a sensation of ourselves in another dimension of being. This to me seems perfectly possible. Perhaps dreams are yet another dimension in which we live, or perhaps they're a cross between two dimensions. As our body lives in length, in breadth, and in height, it may be that our dreams live in the ideal, in the ego, and in space. In space through their visible representation, in the ideal, the ideal through their non-material essence, and in the ego through their personal dimension as something intimately ours. The ego itself, the I in each of us, is perhaps a divine dimension. All of this is complex and will no doubt be determined in its time. Today's dreamers are perhaps the great precursors of the ultimate science of the future. Of course, I don't believe in an ultimate science of the future, but that's beside the point. I periodically formulate metaphysics such as these with the serious concentration of someone who's truly at work to forge science, and it's possible I may actually be forging it. I have to be careful not to take too much pride in this, since pride can undermine the strict impartiality of scientific objectivity.